Bo Mack and, and Terrence said the same. Y'all are in for a treat, you know what I mean? When you got two fighters that got the same mindset, about the same abilities and so on, I mean, you got, you're got you in for a great great night of boxing. How does Sean get ready? How, How does Sean get ready? How does Sean get ready? Everything, man. Uh, track work, swim work. Um, of course, uh, training on the mountain. I think we were at 9,200 feet for this one. And um, and everything in between. The spawn, of course. Did some rounds with Tank Davis. Did some rounds with Andre DeWell. Um, and uh, those are the two biggest names that y'all would know. Um, but we got it all in, man. Everything we need to do. What do you think, Spawn, what Javante Davis did for your preparation? You know what? I think um, getting him on the back end of the, of the, of the sparring was more so to, just to make sure the eyes and, and the focus and everything's there. He is one of the sharpest boxers I have ever been in the ring with. And I'm sure it won't change. I, I, that it won't change much after being in the ring with, with, uh, with Terrence. I, I would imagine that Terrence will be the sharpest, but that boy Tank is sharp. Is it mm. someone you want to face down the line? Who? Javante. No. Now, Sean, you were talking about like how much you were looking forward to this particular fight over the past like year, year and a half. Kind of like go a little bit more into that, like how you're excited about this particular bout going up against Terrence Crawford. When he fought Jose Benavidez, before fighting Jose, I knew he was going to move to 147. And even knowing he was going to come to 47, I was like, I'll never fight him. When I saw his fight with Jose Benavidez, he was like... Jose's here and he was like right here. It was like there was just nothing Jose could do. He was so dominant. I was, I sat back out there. I was like, I might have to get in the ring with this dude, man. He's great. You know, and I think that just over the course of time, hearing people talk and hearing people say that they wanted to see that fight, after the fight with Terrence, uh, with, with Eric Smith Jr., was when I was like hearing people say, you know, what would happen? Terrence Crawford and Sean Porter. I was like, I think I got to do it. I think we got to do it, and here we are. I think Double better, better jab, be right hand comes straight in, but yeah. land. That yeah. ball was doing it effectively. Yeah, you yeah. You don't push him back. And there's get a close there's a him. lot of film to look at, but yeah. none of those guys are me. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, and I understood exactly what they're saying. You know, we turned it up for Sean Porter. As quiet as this camp, every camp. I don't know how it happens, but every camp ends up being just a little bit better than the previous camp. It just is what it is. But when you take a look at the opponents I've been in the ring with, every camp supposed to be a little bit better than the last. You know what I mean? So I understand fully what they were talking about. Uh, I feel like you know my dad might have been taking a shot. It is what it is. But I will say that um, this was the best camp that we've had. But then on the other side of that is the fact that um, Terrence Crawford hasn't been in the ring with anyone like me. But this is the, he toned it all the way up for me. So. You get, you get in the, the best is getting in the ring with the best. There's no doubt about that. Sorry, you oh, why would this be a different result than Earl, you and Earl Spence? Why would the result I, You know, styles make fights. You know what I mean? It, it kind of is what it is, you know? Um, my dad is it, right. Boxing is opinion, opinionated. And depending on who trained that judge, who trained that judge, and who trained that judge, those three judges may be seeing something completely different than five out of ten other people. It just kind of is what it is. So, you know, how will it be different? We got to win those judges. And then we got to land that punch. Sean, you mentioned, you know, throwing off the timing is key. Is that real key to, to not letting this counter punch go in? Is that how you beat a counter punch? That too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, um, you know what, as a kid, you kind of learn things and as you grow in time, you learn more. It's like some things that you learned as a kid, not that they don't matter anymore, but you find out other ways to defeat things. So I'll give you a prime example. As a kid, my dad said, how you beat a counter puncher is with combinations. A, a, a counter puncher's weight, it can counter one punch or two punches, but they can't counter three, four, five punches. And then as you get older, you learn like, oh, I don't have to just uh, throw in combination in order for this guy not to counter punch me. I can faint him or force him to be first, and that takes away his counter punch. So that just kind of give you a little bit more in depth into. So we might be surprised you know, in some of the Sean, things. Did you hear anything? I think y'all be surprised though, about the whole night. Sean, did you hear anything from Bud's tone of voice? No, nah, he's locked in. Oh, exactly okay. where I thought he would yeah, be. Yeah, it was real quiet. Exactly where I thought he would be. He said, he said a couple of times, I'm just ready for the fight. Oh, okay. I, I've, I promoted the hell out of this thing, and. Uh, and that whatever slack he, he had, I picked all that up. 
Yeah, and, you uh, did. man, I had I'm a treat excited. for y'all today. We weren't able to get it in. I had a treat for y'all today. What was the treat, Sean? Sean, you've been in the ring with everyone who's a southpaw for 12 rounds and 11th round, you got clipped with a hook on the inside. That seemed to be Terrence Crawford's specialty, the hooks on the inside. What have you done to prevent that from happening again in this We definitely, uh, are doing the, did the best we could to train to correct the error that I made in that fight in that moment. Um, but yeah, I think that collectively it's just about not getting caught up in moments. And that's now, Sean, Bud's hook he's, he's and Bud's looks be behind, so Sean should be able to get inside um, on that. Prepared more for a left-handed or right-handed uh, Crawford? More for a left-handed. Yeah, more for a left-handed. And Sean, lastly, man, just yeah, mean it. When did you start to see the blueprint to the boxing business? And I see Keyshawn and Robert here. What did you say to young fighters about minding the boxing business as a fighter? I grew into this, man. Um, and these fighters, these young fighters that are coming up, they're going to have to grow up fast. They got social media now. They have a presence now that they didn't didn't have when I was like growing into the sport. When I was 20, 21, we didn't have everything the way that it is now. Um, and so, yeah, I will encourage those guys to, to learn the business, learn what's going on, learn the behind the scenes, understand your contracts, everything that I didn't care about. My dad was pushing it on me even though I didn't care about it. And then guess what? Once I was had the call on it, I knew what I was doing and I knew what I was talking about. So, yeah, I will definitely press upon those guys to start learning it all. Know your place as a fighter, but also know that your place as a fighter is to know the business as well. Now, Sean, you're talking about your uh, legacy as a fighter, where you've been like, you know, fighting for every single belt uh, here in the welterweight division. Kind of going to your legacy and what you want to leave as a fighter here at welterweight. Um, I think the first side of that legacy is done. You you can say that Sean Porter's fought everybody. The other side of the legacy is you have to be able to say, I need y'all to say, y'all have to be able to say, Sean Porter was in the ring with the best and he beat some of the best. This is the other, this is the other best and I have to beat this dude. My, that's what I, so when I say my legacy depends on that, I don't, I, and I keep saying like I've been in a couple of Super Bowls. I've won some and I've lost some. But I don't want y'all, I don't want to be this to be a Dan Marino effect when y'all talking about how good and how great he was. But you always talk about how good and great Dan Marino was, but he never won a Super Bowl. Can't have y'all saying that about me. Can't have y'all saying, oh, he was in the ring with the best. But I have that but. Is that confidence or pressure? Is that confidence or pressure? Oh, I was confident. <laughs> no pressure. Lastly, man, they make, they make a lot about Terrence. Go, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yep, I got they, you. they make a lot about uh, tough, you know, meanness when it comes to Crawford. That that's an edge he has over his opponents in the ring. Is that, is that true in this fight? He's a meaner guy that gives him something? It's a, It comes in a different package in this fight. And uh, the package that I have works for me. The package that he has works for him. It's up to me to make my package work for me against him. And uh, that's what I intend to do. What about making the judgment? I love to see him do it, man. He's 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 not carrying this sport, but this sport, he he's he's a big part of this sport. And no matter where he goes, no matter what he does, everybody's gonna be tuned in. So the more he can challenge himself and uh, and get everybody to rock with him, I dig everything this man has done. And uh, I dig what he did against uh, Caleb Plant. Solid, man. Solid. Guys, we gotta wrap up. I hate it. Wish my boy would get back in here. I actually thought it was gonna be him and I. And uh, I'm, I'm glad this one jumped off instead. Uh, this was the one, I, I wanted this one more than I wanted a, a rematch with, uh, with, 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 uh, with Keith. Hey, Terrence is good at making adjustments in the ring. Last one. Are you, are you, uh, are you confident in yourself that you can adjust in the ring? You know, yeah, man, um, here's why I'm confident. Um, it's always like my opposition always, I rise to that occasion. And um, understanding everything that he does in the ring and the way he makes adjustments and things like that, it's, uh, it's gonna force me to just make the, the adjustments and, and do the, the necessary things to get the job done. Thanks, Sean. Y'all got it, Thanks, thank y'all.